Okay. Mark. Mark. Your name's not Mark, I'm Mark. He's marking. Amanda Tapping, one of my favorite people. Hi. Welcome back to Gay World. Thank you. It's been a lot of years. It has been a long time. So what I want to ask you about is first, uh, we got to talk to you a lot over the course of several years of the yeah. show and the years after the show. I want to rewind a bit and talk to you first about Sanctuary. Ah. What, what part did that play in your life and your career as you were making this big transition from acting to producing and now spending most of your time directing? Yeah. Um, well, Sanctuary was a big uh, learning curve, to be honest, for Damian Kindler and Martin Wood and myself. Um, we knew that there was something special in the entity that was Sanctuary. Damien had created a really interesting world. And we also knew we were taking, as Helen Magnus would put it, a tremendous leap of faith to leave the comfort of the Stargate franchise and branch out on our own. We were shifting the paradigm, I keep using that term, wow, uh, of television in terms of how we financed and how we distributed, uh, which had never been done. Um, and we were using the red camera, which had never been used for television. So we knew we were breaking a lot of ground. And we tried to, you know, we wanted to do it as a web series. And then television came along, which was far more, uh, made far more sense. But it played a huge role just in terms of my growth uh, of understanding the full picture, right? So when you're an actor on a TV series, no matter how much you try to learn about the other departments and jobs, you, uh, it's still a pretty limited vision. But when you're looking at the full picture and you've got a budget and you understand what hot costs mean and you understand you know, how each individual department has to connect, um, it was a huge, it was amazing. It was an amazing learning curve and I loved every step of it. I loved prep and I also loved post. I loved talking to the composer and listening to him, you know, going through the episode and saying, we need something like this here and then going through the final sound and going through color corrects and, going to the VisFX house and talking to them about what we needed, it, every aspect. You were wearing all the hats on that show. Martin, Damien, and I all wore all the hats. And, you know, I think people thought, oh, she's an executive producer because she's the lead actress, but we actually all did it. My job was to talk to the network whenever the network had notes and try to deal with them and deal with our financers. You know, Martin dealt with the distributors and Damien dealt with the creative. And so we all, but we all dealt with the crew and any issues. So it was, and we each took episodes, you know to take from start to finish, so. Now I'm gonna put some of your directing resume out here on the table. These are shows that we watch, shows that we love. Uh, Big Vancouver shows, Continuum. Yeah. Directed for Dark Matter, Van Helsing, Travelers, Supernatural, the new Anne show, yeah. Anne with an E. Uh, what do you love about this phase in your creative life? Uh, it's challenging. It's really hard. And fun, don't get me wrong, but it's, uh, I love the challenge of it, to take an episode from start to finish, to be responsible for every single shot that is made, to be responsible for how you think you're going to put it together, to, uh, to be cognizant of budget, to be cognizant of time, um, the way it's scheduled, and, and you know, knowing if I have you know, 12 scenes to shoot in a day, it's going to change how I shoot each of those scenes, and just knowing um, not trying to be too tricky, you know? Really, for me, my job is to tell the story in the most beautiful way I can, um, but also to make it cool. So all of those aspects are challenging and exciting. I would say exciting more than challenging. But to wear all those hats on a, any given day and to uh, have to answer 100 questions a day, literally. Literally, it's ridiculous. There's no break, but I love it. And I always go home tired but fulfilled and it's uh yeah i just say it's challenging and i love it it Jeez. scares the sh <laughs> to be honest with you it really does every time every time i start a new show i'm scared which i think is good show that you're doing now that you get a buzz when you know you're invited back you're gonna go do another one travelers for sure uh and with an e for sure because um moira wally beckett who runs a show uh, and writes the show is uh, like one of my superheroes. She's just amazing. And she came off Breaking Bad and then did Skin and Bone and then went on and did Anne. It's like, ah, and she just has a beautiful mind. It's amazing. Um, I was excited when I got asked back to do X Company because I loved that show. Um, 
And Supernatural, it honestly is just such fun. And the challenge is trying to make it different and interesting. And I got a great episode last season. One of my episodes was a film noir episode. So it was like studying that genre. And so there's always something. But Travelers for me because it's Brad. And I love Brad Wright to the ends of the earth. I love that man. He's responsible for so much of my good fortune. And you're on screen in Travelers now. Uh huh. A really interesting character. Yeah. Possible spoilers for the end of season two for anybody who hasn't seen it, but your character goes in a really interesting direction. She does. Uh huh. And I was like, hey, Brad. What's going to happen in season three? You must come back. I guess I have three. to come back. <laughs> I'm not going to push. <laughs> well, actually, I kind of blew it in my talk because I said one of the episodes I directed was called Perot, which is my character's name, so I guess. Uh, spoiler alert Perot comes back. There is a new generation of Stargate fans. Yeah! It's been long Oh, enough. sorry. <laughs> yeah! The kids will soon start to have kids, and we're introducing our daughters yeah, to Stargate. Yeah, that's so cool. I have a daughter. We're going we're gonna to introduce her to Stargate. Um, new young girls are meeting Samantha Carter for the very first time. Yeah. What do you hope that they see in her and in that show? Just I hope they see the strength and integrity and the, you know, the desire to push boundaries without... I, what I loved about Sam was there wasn't um, there wasn't a, a shrillness to her. There wasn't a harsh aspect to her, even though she probably had to fight really hard in a man's world. But she she didn't choose that route. She chose to just be and live in the environment that she was in and prove herself by being who she was, without you know, always waving the flag of, I'm a woman, and I'm just as good, and I, and I just think that, like, like, eventually that will change for girls where they don't have to do that, but that you can just prove yourself, you know, and prove your self-worth as a young woman without having to stand on a soapbox. I hope that that's the case, and then I hope that there's just no need for it at all whatsoever, but, exactly. yeah. I've got to ask this one. Ten years after we saw them on screen, what do you think Sam and Jack are doing? Oh, I think they're together. I really do. Uh, I don't know if they're married. I actually don't know if they would get married. I think that they, uh, but I think for sure they're together. And I think Sam goes off and does her missions and Jack probably retired quite happily. And that when she comes back from missions, they're together. Like I said, she comes back into the cabin and he's got dinner made and the laundry is done. And the house is clean. <laughs> There's hospital corners in the beds tucked in properly. Jack, just asking. Yeah. <laughs> and there's fresh fish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you're still doing conventions, obviously. We're here at GayCon. You keep yeah. coming back to the Stargate world. It's been. A, I do. I don't do a lot of conventions. And Talking but, with fans is, continues but, to be part of... of yeah, work. you know, it, I think because there's just a huge appreciation for the fandom. And there's a huge desire to say thank you. And, uh, and like you said, there's a whole new generation um, who haven't heard the same story a hundred times. So, yay, fresh, <laughs> fresh ears to listen. Um, but I probably do like two conventions a year, maybe. Um, and I just, I, it's just lovely. It's so, I, find, I feel so grateful to be able to meet people and say thank you and, because that's really what it's about. Thank you for their support, you know. And it's fun. And I like this, what we talked about in the, uh, in the um, panel was what, how great the fandom is, like how, how friendships have been formed from around the globe. Um, and, and how they come together to Vancouver from various parts of the world to hang out together. The show is almost ancillary at this point to the friendships that have been formed, right? Which is cool. If Stargate were to reemerge one day in some form, what do you think it needs to have the heart of what Stargate was always about? Uh, I think it still needs to retain a certain sense of humor. You know, I think that, that that not taking itself too seriously was part of the thing that made Stargate so accessible. Uh, and I think it, 
it, it needs a great ensemble. You know, that's the one thing that they were always good at putting together. You know, and Brad and, and Joe and Paul and Rob Cooper were always good at putting together ensembles that made sense and that worked together. And I think that that's. But now, you know, there's some. We can go so far with it because the tech, like what David and I talked about, the you know, science fiction has fast become science fact. So, so much of the technology we were, you know, imagining is now actually being used. And so I think we can take it so much further, which is cool. We just need a Stargate. We just need a Stargate. That, unfortunately, has not been found. <laughs> it's moved. It's been moved. <laughs> Amanda, thanks so much. Thank you. It's, a it's been such a long time. It seems so crazy. But thank you. <laughs>